this is David and Haggerty on Redline Rebuild Updates. Today we're balancing our small block Chevy assembly uh, for our build. And if you remember from last week's episode, I had my motor running in the dyno over here. So kind of back a week later, it's, it's pretty cool. By no means is this small block gonna make the power of that small block. But at the same token, I do want it to run smoothly. There's lots of questions out there. Of, oh my God, why are you putting so much time and effort into this small block? Well, I'll tell you what, I don't want it to come apart and the devil is in the details. So I like to go through and balance it for the price of a balance. I mean, the factory rods are within what, 14 grams. And that's a lot, by the way, that's a big spread. We want them down to basically exactly the same motor runs smoother motor will not hammer out the bearings over time and uh i mean that, that it's needed I, trust me been there i've wiped stuff out before so right now he's uh john's going through and taking the big end of the rods and grinding off the weight pad to make them the same weight so you have a rod in that has you got your small end and your big end and on the balance beam over here, you scale that and you measure individually the big end and the small end and you make them all match. That makes a balanced rod. That's the starting point. So John has the rods all balanced, big end, small end, everything's all exactly the same now. And now we're moving on to measuring just the rings. So you wanna know what the weight of the ring pack is going to be on each piston. And then likewise, you also include in your bearing because that's part of that rotating assembly piece. And then we'll move on to the pistons to get our bob weight, which applies to balancing the crank. <laughs> to bland, <laughs> applies to balancing the crank. Wow. Thought you were a professional. Butchered the hell out of that, didn't I? This assembly is referred to as the bob weight, and it's going to represent the weight of the rod and piston assembly, including the rings and the bearings and the wrist pins. So when you go to spin the crankshaft, obviously you can't have the rods and pistons flinging around madly, but you control it with this bob weight. So now that we know all the weight and we have the bob weight set, that bob weight is attached now to the crankshaft and now we can spin the crankshaft. <laughs> so that's in grams, but it's off a long ways. 140. Oh, that's on each end. Oh, I yeah, because I'm on the 10 scale. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Well, that's me added. You're gonna get a cool video today. I'll say I was afraid of, mm -hmm. or assuming yeah. to some extent. Not afraid of it, I mean. <clears throat> so because the um, hyper eutectic pistons are a little bit, well, a fair amount heavier than the cast stock cast pistons, we're going to need to add weight to the counterbalances to offset that bob weight of the piston flinging. And it's a fair amount, it's uh, 140 grams. Um, so that's where heavy metal rolls in, also known as tungsten. 
So now that we have a number that we need to add to our counterweights, which is the 140, John has the crankshaft over here in a very specially and well-used uh, clamp, I'll say, uh, over on the mill. So from there, John, I know we're adding tungsten or mallory. What, how are you gonna do this? Tell me, <laughs> and tell me why you're here opposed to here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this piece of mallory, we're gonna drill and ream a hole right here where it says it wants that 140 grams. Um, and we do it this way because centrif centrifugal force to put it in this way, it could come right. out. Okay, and, so you leave material on the, since you're inset into the throw, they'd have to blow the crankshaft apart. Yeah, we'd have apart. to pull the whole yeah. counterweight of the crankshaft okay. off of it to, to be a problem. Right. Or if it was loose, and yeah, it could work in or out, but that's where the press fit and tack weld come into play. Right, so. okay. Yeah. All right, so drill and ream, so you got a perfectly sized hole, get it as tight as possible. Yep without distorting the daylights out of everything yes, as well. Exactly. Okay. Yep. All right. It looked better before. Yeah. We're uh, way closer, uh, but we still got a ways to go, right? So we're at, instead of 140 grams out on both ends, uh, we're at 35 and 17. So, and slightly, I think these are different angles as well, right? Yeah, yeah, one's at 25, so it wants 35 grams added right there. Right. Oh, right there, sorry. And then okay. 17 added there. Gotcha. So we'll just weld in these holes. Okay. In each end and right. So in this case, since we don't need to make as big of a jump, we don't need to use the tungsten. Add, we don't need to use the tungsten. Yeah. We can. You, you can just it weld. Added expense. Right. The tungsten. Yeah, we're close enough. We so can. wire wire weld in mild steel. Mm -hmm. Is that what it is? Yep. Okay. Stop it right there. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, cool, got it. Zeros. All zeros, buddy. All zeros. Perfectly internally balanced. Right? Yeah. So there is a difference between internally and externally balanced. If we were externally balanced, do, balancing this crankshaft assembly, we would have to have our balancer and our flex plate or flywheel out on the end of this and spin it kind of all at the same time. But given that we're doing internal, we just balance the crankshaft relative to the bob weight, we get zeros. And it's kind of the first time in your life you want to be a zero, I mean, for all intents and purposes. So, crankshaft done? We're ready. Not everything but the cleanup, right? We're gonna dust off the oil and all that jazz. Sweet. And unfortunately, my balancer's not ready yet from coding standpoint and neither is the flex plate. So I'll send that to you to zero balance it. So meaning you'll spin it, 
And uh, yeah, I have a special fixture yep. with flex plates and flywheels and balancers. Yeah, just make sure it doesn't have a heavy spot on one end, one side or the other. Like a truly like a tire. Yeah. So cool. Nice. Well, one big one big step in our project to be done. So that's good. Good deal. All right. So for those naysayers out there, we'll be able to cruise at 2,500 RPM as smooth as silk. Okay, so here's my rockauto.com tip of the day. We've been to two shops today, one grinding crankshaft, one doing all the engine work and such that we just showed you, and they both had the same thing to say. We need help. So here's my tip. Whether you're getting your, looking for your first job or your next career or whatever it may be, there are local shops around you looking for someone like you. All right, well, we've had uh, quite the day here. We, uh, we picked up our crankshaft early this morning, got it over here to Apex, and uh, the crankshaft, balance-wise, we've covered all of our bases and everything that may or may not need to be done to the crankshaft to get it balanced. We added weight. We cut holes. We welded up holes. And we ground on the edge. But at the end of the day, we have a perfectly balanced rotating assembly now. And of course, since we were here, Don was nice enough to hang the pistons for us too. So with that, we are done here and headed back to our shop to uh, well, start assembly. So with that, you know the drill. Get out in your shop, get your work done. And oh, by the way, if you want to see a really cool engine, go back to the last episode and check out the dragster motor. See ya. Shameless plug.